chromium or vanadium coating on a tooth of a chain that uh, it gives it a sharp edge. Um, pretty much <coughs> that that vanadium coating sits on top of the softer metal. Uh, the two the two in conjunction is actually what makes a tooth nice and sharp. Um, it, the uh, the softer metal gives a, a little bit of flex and give in the in the bed of the tooth. Uh, and the vanadium is actually the hard edge, so the <coughs> the softer metal kind of carries that vanadium or chromium plating uh, throughout the, the the cutting bed of the tooth. <coughs> you see, I'm just grabbing files. I typically <coughs> I like to use a little bit bigger bite of file than is required for pitch of chain. This is actually a file for 325 chain. Um, that's a quarter pitch chain. <coughs> I know it sounds funny, but I like a I like a bigger rounder bite in my chains. Uh, it's a lot cleaner and smoother and it seems to go deeper faster. But here um, you know, this is the basics. I do run my chains this loose often. Um, this is after some cutting though, so you'll see me tighten it up a little bit more than that. <coughs> Interesting thing here, this uh, this bar groove, I cut it for use on a bigger saw or a smaller saw. What I use is like a linchpin as a spacer and, it, it, and for the smaller studs or you can change the studs out if you want. Um, bar maintenance is very important. For that I have an air compressor and if I need to flatten the bar I have I have a, a belt sander here that I'll run and flatten the bar to clean it. This bar doesn't have a lot of burrs. There's a tiny burr off of the tip. Um, not a concern because I can just flip the bar <coughs> and I'm going to do that for now but I always use a I always use a hacksaw blade to clean the groove out and then blast it out. Air compressor air compressor is a very important tool very important. Bar maintenance is everything it's if you want your saw to cut good, you see you, you see how flat that bar is. I don't know if you can see it in the in in the video or not. I'm trying to get a good angle here with the camera. I'm not very good at cameras. Um, keeping that bar nice and flat and true on both sides, keeping it clean. Those burrs are not going to be a problem because this is <clears throat> right now we're in light use, so the less I have to sand on the bar and grind on it. Uh, the better because the bar lasts longer so I'm cheap that way but I also I also modify my own bars make my own bars um, that is one thing that, <coughs> that after years and years of doing this I've noticed, I've noticed a, a big difference, and the more ability I have, like you saw, you saw this kit in here, the the Grandberg Field Breaker Mender. That's for chains. That's my box of rivets and presets. Uh, pretty much, I take that everywhere I go on a job. If I'm going to need, if I have lots of bars and lots of saws and chain, I can size my chains down on site. I don't have to go to a shop, which is great. <clears throat> now, I just want to real quick get into this machine. This is a basic cheapy Harbor Freight chainsaw sharpener. Um, you don't need real fancy chainsaw sharpener to get a good sharp chain. And if you follow me here, you'll see why. Um, I mark where I'm going to start. 
what I use this for <clears throat> I use this tool for what is known as scuffing I don't know or what it what I call scuffing uh, a scuff I call a chain of scuff if basically if I just ran it through on the grinder and and got a got a good sharpen if, if I feel good about it a scuff is the way to go for the day um, I don't push down real hard I don't take a lot out basically I have these marks here they're opposite each other 30 about 35 degree and that's about what I run on my angles I use this tool I don't know if you can see it in there I use this tool to, to lower the bite and to open the bite and to get the same angle on the chain. Uh, that's about all I use it for. That's why I call them scuffs. Because basically I'm just real quickly going through and scuffing the chain. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really grinding hard what, what you're hearing. That's the bottom of the bite of the tooth. That's down. That's down at the base. It's down in the sweep, and and that's where I grind a little bit hard, and it it doesn't burn the tooth. Uh, up top, you want to be careful. You, you hear how I'm kind of just gently walking it in there, and taking my time, letting it letting it and, and I'm actually pushing the, the flexible the, the head of this thing flexes a bit which is great because I can I can control exactly where this grinder hits the tooth and how much it takes out of the tooth but you see I'm just going in real light real light and see I'm, I'm nearly done Anytime you use a grinder, <clears throat> basically what the grinder's there for is to straighten the teeth out. The chain doesn't get sharp by the grinder alone. You can run, like I mentioned before, you can you can run a scuff, a, a chain that's just scuffed on the grinder. You can run it uh, just fine. Um, it's all really personal preference. Sometimes a scuff chain is a faster chain. Sometimes it's uh, it's the worst chain to have. But it really depends on what you're doing and and how often you need to sharpen. There's uh, there's times where where I'll need to sharpen a chain, maybe maybe five or six times in a day while I'm using it and uh, you know scuff chains are great because I can I can bring three or four scuff chains with me and then only only use the file to touch them up or you know if I only need the one chain and I'm happy happy with the way that chains cutting I uh, I can touch it up throughout the day but you see how quick that happened. That's that's how quick uh, any any grinder, even even if you use the the more heavy duty professional ones, um, I would highly recommend uh, learning how to use the grinder. Learning learning which part. You see, I drilled my bars out, so I'm just choosing. I'm choosing where the best oil flow is going to come out. I I drill them and cut them. Um, but as far as using that grinder, uh, I really highly recommend learning the, the physics of, of how, how that grinder is going to benefit you or, or how it may hinder you um, by being too aggressive. The grinder can definitely be too aggressive and what happens is, is the grinder is cutting on that chain. Um, there's the softer metal and and the, uh, the 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 harder vanadium coating on the chain. Uh, basically, your uh, 
your chain, here's your bite, and here's your top of your tooth. Well, I cut the backs of my teeth so that they clear better, but basically your vanadium coating is this thin layer and it's 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 on the top and it's on the side of the tooth and inside of that I don't know if you can see in the illustration here inside of that the part that you're grinding is actually a softer metal well what's happening there is as that grinders cutting <clears throat> into the the chrome plating on top and the softer metal it's rolling the two together which is making a really really strong and really sharp uh, tooth so that's that is why I like scuffs I call them scuffs because you're basically you're you're structuring the chain you're scuffing it into shape you're not you're you're not really grinding it to get sharper um, like you would an axe blade or a, a knife blade it's it's not the same principle I uh, basically you're basically you're knocking down the burrs on the chain um, and the the small burr that you're creating on the edge of the tooth is that's where the sharpness comes from uh, that's that's about what I run looseness wise on a quarter tip bar on a gas saw because they they do like to they like to tense tension they like to get tense uh, they like to get tighter as the as the things heat up and the, the saw turns the chain around usually I do it you know a little space almost a almost a pinky um, and and you can hear it in the tip too if it rolls fairly smooth then you're good to go now for sharpening with a hand file this is where I say choose your choose your file that you you want to use. Choose the bite that you want. It's going to take time. This is this is the correct size. Actually, this is for three eighths. Um, <coughs> either one of those works. <coughs> it gives me a nice round the round bite. You want you want a round bite on that chain. You don't want to come in and go there. That that's not smooth. So. That's typically why I'll go a little bit bigger if my bite is structured for it. Basically, <clears throat> I will find there's my little yellow tooth. Or there's my yellow tooth. That's where I started. That's where I'm going to finish. So I hold the chain with one hand and I pull with the other. And it's hard to see, but there's a little shadow right where the right where the tooth meets with the file you keep that angle it's easier to keep that angle with one hand pulling than it is with two hands pushing two hands pushing you're doing this um, that's why I don't agree with that method I've never used the two hand method ever in my whole life of sharpening chainsaws and <clears throat> I always get a nice sharp chain but here and uh, you hold the file in, in, in your finger in the hilt uh, you know get it so when you pull it you can feel it you can feel it it's actually it's rolling the two metals together um, and making a real sharp edge and plus plus you're maintaining the uh, the, the angle that you ran on the grinder uh, and and I just use a few pulls basically what this is doing it's not it's not sharpening the edge of the tooth any like a knife it's actually this is just opening up the bite it's making the bite rounder um, because <clears throat> 90 percent of how a saw cuts is and how round that bite is and th this chain's pretty beat so <clears throat> it's actually hanging up in the bar a little bit that's why I'm struggling but that's why you can see me having problems pulling it one-handed but um, that's just me being cheap. This is this is more of my firewood chain, or I I use it for a lot of things. But see, I hold I hold the chain as still as I can with this hand, so it doesn't flop back and forth and ruin the angle. <clears throat> Basically, you can hear it. 
you can hear it cutting and you see that was the tooth that I had already done so you could hear the difference in the tooth and the same here I get my angle now I might run more passes when I'm pushing and you see where I put where I start that's going to give a nice straight direct hit I'm I'm not doing this I'm going straight in straight in and pull back straight in and pull back and you'll you'll see that I'm doing more passes when I push why because I have less leverage and I still want to get I still want to get the same amount of material removed in the bite without without stressing if I if I try to push in really hard um, leverage wise I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have the same effect <clears throat> and it's gonna knock the angle off I don't know if you can see the shadow the shadow between the angle of the tooth and the file it disappears as I keep sharpening well we'll call this one sharp because it's a firewood chain it's going to be used again um, I'll put that up for now and I'll, I'll mess with it tomorrow when I have to go out what I want to show is like laws of coefficient uh, things that well things that fall um, but a bigger bigger heavier saw bigger heavier saw with a shorter bar and, sh and modified chain slightly modified to cut faster um, nine nine out of ten times is is going to be a lot smoother and easier to operate than say a smaller saw and I'll, I'll do a comparison here um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make a little bear head and show you. <laughs> so there's the bigger saw. And this one cuts slower. But it still does the job. Very much. Now... Now the idea here, <coughs> I like the bigger one for roughing out. It's a, it's a lot more efficient. There's the, there's the back, back slope of the head. You can see where I got the ears started. See where about the nose is going to come out. So I'll put the nose right in there. Started the nose, still have room for the ears. Now, <coughs> now I draw on the cheek. Now here's where, as I'm cutting down, I'm trying to pull the saw back a little bit for this line because I don't want to cut into the nose. See, I kind of, I kind of cut in, felt my way into it. And there too, actually making round, trying to determine that roundness before I cut it out. So here,
You know, you can kind of see this. The, the head is taking shape. And it, it's all really set. How many cuts have been made so far? Six? Maybe eight? Can you keep it rounded? Now here, I want to bring in the jawline. There's no pushing. There's no hard pushing. So, this is hard to get the angle here with the camera. You can see. See that I'm fairly relaxed this whole time. I'm not. I'm not rushing anything. Um, oil's good. If I were speed carving, yeah, I'd, I'd be going a little faster. But I'd, I'd be hitting things, you know, pieces out of the way. But now I do the back of the ear. <laughs> Just a little shake. Just a little shape so that I know I know zone for zone where I'm at. I know I know where I know about where the shape of the head's gonna come out. Now, this is not an anatomically perfect bear, but you kind of get the idea. probably one of my favorite tricks and tips screw a board to the bottom of your thing <clears throat> get one of these hydraulic lift carts if you can um, very convenient but screw a board to the bottom of your piece <coughs> and then it stays put and I don't know how much of this is being seen on camera or not but Try to follow the same plan. Thank <laughs> you. 
So you see, I've got some evening out to do, of course. Basic bear head. Basic bear head and shoulders. Not perfect by any means, but that's a start. That'll definitely give you some idea of, you know, let's sharpen our saws, let's maintain our saws, let's clean our saws, and then let's go carve. Um, you know, I could use a smaller saw for most of that, but I, I personally, I like the bigger saw just because it knocks them out. And I'm, I, I don't have to hurry. Uh, I don't have to push. You saw that I held that saw with one hand when I made a plunge cut right in here. Uh, you know, for me, that's what it's all about. It's all about efficiency. So, hope this helps.